Good morning. Welcome on this third Sunday of the season of Lent. We have a number of things that uh, we're going to be talking about. Uh, I brought some flyers that are in the back of the church. If you want to pick one of these up, this is uh, tells about the Seder meal that we're going to be having on Monday, Thursday in the Christian Life Center. Tells a little bit about what a Seder is, and uh, we'll be doing that. So there's some flyers in the back for that. Uh, Anne is not here this morning, but she asked me if I would pass this around. This is, has to do with the uh, Easter egg hunt, carnival, and cakewalk. Uh, different categories on here for different things. Plastic eggs, fill eggs, boiled eggs, kitchen help, wrapped candy. There's a bunch of categories. So I'm going to pass this around. And uh, you all will just... Okay, and as I said, these uh, flyers are in the back of the sanctuary. They have to do with the Seder meal that we'll be doing. I'm just going to let Richard share the announcements with you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As you'll see on the back of the bulletin, we had breakfast this morning. Had a pretty good one. Uh, we're going to have another one coming up the 17th. So uh, We're going to do two of them a month, as far as I can tell. I haven't been notified of anything different than that. Uh, tomorrow, Monday, 6.30 Boy Scouts, Tuesday, 6.30 Cub Scouts, Wednesday, 6.30 is a Methodist Youth Fellowship. Next Sunday's message is running away. And like I said, come the 17th, another breakfast, the 23rd is the Carnival and Egg Hunt, 24th is Palm Sunday, 28th is the Holy Thursday service, 7 p.m., and the next day, 29th, is a Good Friday service at 7 p.m. also. Anybody like to add anything to those? Yes, ma'am. I would like to call a meeting of the Finance Committee along with the <coughs> trustees this Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. And here in the big... Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else? Anybody had a birthday? Celebrated an anniversary. This morning as we prepare to go to the Lord in worship on this third Sunday in the season of Lent, I'm going to be talking a little bit today. We've been talking over the past several weeks about giving up bad things for the season of Lent. And we're going to be talking about the enemies from within today. Some things that maybe we need to deal with inwardly. And as we prepare to do that this morning, would you bow with me in prayer? Lord, you are a God of love, a God of peace, and a God of forgiveness. We know that in our lives we deal with many, many issues, many, many emotions and feelings. And so, Lord, we just ask that during this time of worship this morning, we may, first of all, set aside all of our, <coughs> our concerns and all of our fears, all those things that tend to weigh us down and that we may Open our minds and our hearts to you this morning. And that secondly, Lord, that as we discard those burdens today, that we leave them here, especially this day, when we come to you in the sacrament of Holy Communion, as we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made, the giving of his body and the giving of his blood, that we may leave here today unburdened. That we may leave here today with a new light in our life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our call to worship this morning is, you will find in the Faith We Sing hymnal, the little uh, leather-bound book on page 2282. I'll fly away. Let's stand together and sing. 2282.
join me as together we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed that you'll find in the bulletin. Let us say what we believe. I believe, I believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Price is right, come on down. Sit right down here in front of me. I'm going to show you something today. Okay. You know what I got today? Yeah. All right. You guys like apples? Do you? Apples are good, aren't they? And they're good for you, you know that? They're, they are fat-free and cholesterol-free and salt-free and sugar-free and all kinds of free and have vitamins. Hmm? Well, yeah, I guess if, you, if your tooth was loose and you bit into one, it could help get your tooth out too, couldn't it? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> well, you know what kind of apple this is? It, you're, that's half right. It's called a Red Delicious. It's a red delicious apple, but you know that there are over, I mean, how many of you all know this out there? There are over 7,500 different varieties of apples. Did you know that? I didn't either. It's funny what you can learn when you're doing research, right? And actually, there are, apples are produced mainly in five different countries around the world. They're produced in the United States, and they're produced mostly more in the, in the United States. They're produced in China and in Turkey, and in Italy, and in France. That's where apples are made. And what kind of different things can you make with apples? What can you make with apples? Well, you have seeds in them, but what can you do? What can you make with apples? What? Apple pie. Apple pie. That's my favorite one. But you can also have apple juice. You ever have apple juice? Yeah, apple juice. Apple cider. How about applesauce? You ever have applesauce? Yeah. You like applesauce? Yes. That's good stuff. And you know what else you can do with apples? Ever have apple butter? You can put it on toast. You know one of my favorite things to do with an apple? Cut it up and dip it in what? Huh? Peanut butter. Caramel. Caramel apples. Caramel apples. When I was a kid, they used to put a stick in an apple. And you'd roll it, wrap it around, and all the caramel on it. You have all kind of caramel on the outside. Then they'd roll it around in nuts. Pretty good. Well, I'm sure all of you know where apples come from, right? Where do they come from? Apple trees. That's right. That's right. Yeah, they come from seeds. That's right. Well, let me ask you something. If you guys took the seeds out of this apple, and you planted the seed in the yard, and it grew up into an apple tree, but it didn't make any apples, would it be any good? No. No. It would be just a Just another tree. If you watered it and took care of it and fed it and everything, but it never made any apples, it wouldn't do you much good, would it? No. Well, you know what? Jesus told that kind of a story about a fig tree. You all ever had any figs? You know what figs are? Yeah. Hmm? They're kind of a fruit. You ever had a cookie called a fig newton? Yeah, those are figs. 
You probably like apples better than you do figs. But Jesus told a story about a man who planted a fig tree and for three years he watered it and took care of it, but it didn't make any figs. And so he told the gardener, I want you to cut that tree down. And the gardener said, oh, let's give it one more year. Let me dig around it, and I'll fertilize it, and I'll take care of it, and we'll see if in one more year we can make it produce figs. Well, you know what? In telling that story about the, the fig tree, Jesus was also talking about us. You know that? God planted us. God put us here on this earth, and he expects us to produce good fruit. You know what that means? It means to do good things. Things like love and joy and peace and to be patient with other people and to be kind with other people and to be gentle with other people. And when we don't do those things, it makes him unhappy, but he's still willing to give us another chance, like the man in the story did with the tree. So Jesus wants us to come to him when we have problems. And Jesus cares about helping us in our problems. And he wants us to trust him and to read the Bible and to pray about it. Because God wants us to be like this, this pretty, this is a pretty apple, I bet it's going to taste good too. Mm. Yeah. He wants us to be like this. This is good fruit. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to produce good fruit and be good people and love other people and be happy with other people and share our peace and our joy and our and our love with other people. You think? You okay, can you all do that? Yeah, you can. Let's say a prayer. Lord, we know that we don't always do the right things, and there are some times when we are impatient. We want to quit. But Lord, help us through your love and through the power of the Holy Spirit to produce good fruit, to, to love other people and to be kind with other people and to share with other people and to bring your love and your joy and your peace to them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to save this for later. Okay, how about your joys today? Beautiful day. It's going to be in the 60s today if you can put up with the wind a little bit. With that moisture, right? And, you know, I'm, I'm happy it's March for two reasons. Number one, the first of March is the meteorological beginning of spring, according to what I hear. It doesn't start officially until the 22nd or 21st, but the meteorologists say the 1st of March is their beginning of spring. And I'm more excited about March because March means Girl Scout cookies are available. Why is that always in Lent, though? Why is that always in Lent, though? Well, but you know what? They come in boxes and wrappers. I can, I can save them. Right. <laughs> now, when I go up to St. Anne's, I go up Northwest Highway, and I don't expect to see Girl Scouts up there until March. Now, when I was up there two weeks ago, in February, they were out on the corner. And they were there, but I didn't have my money with me. My cookie money. Now, I've got cookie money today, so they better be there today. <laughs> if they're not, I'm going to call the Girl Scout Council and find out where they're at. That's right. There are no bad cookies. You all know that. that. That's my philosophy in life. Some are better than others, but there are no bad ones. All right. Other joys. Joys today. Being here this morning. That's a joy. I'm happy to have all of you here this morning. We've had some moisture in, in the form of, of liquid and not snow, so I'm happy about that. 
And there's some more promise next weekend, but it's supposed to be in the liquid form also. It's supposed to be in the 50s, so it shouldn't be snow. So, and if you look on the, the official state drought map, those areas are getting smaller and the, the dark red is being replaced with another color. So we're getting there. It's going to take a little bit more time and a, a whole lot more rain, but we're going to get there. So that's a joy. Other joys today. Got the hills back from the high seas and <laughs> ship didn't break down or anything. Good. Back in the out in the Bahamas, I think, or Caribbean or somewhere, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. All right. Okay. Other joys today. My uh, two great grandsons in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, went to the state wrestling tournament, and I'm extremely proud of them. Oh, very, yeah. very good. Very good. State. Very good. Seven and nine. Seven and nine. <laughs> that's a that's an interesting place. I've I've been to Gettysburg, stayed there overnight for a couple of nights, and that's a, that's a really interesting place to explore, especially especially if you like history, and I do. We're glad to have Michael with us today. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. In case, in case you all don't know this, he is one of our custodians, right? So if you got, if you got joys or concerns about the <laughs> <laughs> no, he does a good job. We're very pleased with the job that he does here. Yes, indeed. Okay. He does a good job in here. Your, your previous custodian didn't like to come in this building because she heard noises in here and thought it was haunted. So. <laughs> right. Other joys that you have? Okay, how about some concerns? Of course, we're going to ask you to continue to, to pray for the, the folks who were killed up there in the helicopter crash in St. Anne's, for their families, and, and for uh, uh, Billy Wynn, who is uh, actually getting better, I get emails because his stepfather is a retired police officer. He's getting better, slowly but surely. He was burned over 50% of his body, and so it's slow going. He's had a couple of surgeries uh, since that happened, but it's that he is improving. So we're we're grateful for that. We'll keep praying for them. Yes. Our son Tim had his back surgery, and he's he's doing okay, but it's going to be a long road. For him. That's, that's a long way back, too. Long way. Okay. Other concerns that you want to share out loud this morning? First, we're going to keep praying for our country. We're facing some problems now, and we need to, to remember that we need to pray for our country. We need to pray. Um, in Madison's, uh, their grandparents, uh, Marty and Gail, uh, got to the class this week. Mm -hmm. Nobody seriously injured, but definitely always those concerns about the stiff necks and stuff like that. So, right. cars turned out. So. Okay, need to remember them. Uh, Anne is not here. And she was here earlier and told me that they had car issues. She was driving uh, Nyla's truck, I think, and said that they went out somewhere yesterday in their van and they started it up, and she said it sounded like a road grader. So I don't know what that is, but I know what a road grader is, but I don't know what kind of a noise a car makes when <laughs> that kind of problem. But So we need to, need to remember them. Others this morning that you want to remember? Just continue to pray for our church during Lent. We have a number of things coming up. The Easter egg carnival and then the, the Seder meal that we're going to be having. And as I said, there are some flyers in the back. You want to pick one of those up? Uh, that will be held in the Christian Life Center on Monday, Thursday, and uh, then our Good Friday presentation of uh, the path of Christ. So just continue to lift up our, our church, and again, we will be having a sunrise service on Easter Sunday morning, and then a 10:30 service. So um, just continue to lift up all the things that we will be doing, and, and especially this. 115th anniversary thing that we have coming up that you'll be hearing a lot more about as we get past Lent and Easter. Uh, Bishop will be here with us and, and uh, we'll have a good a good time and a good celebration. So, you have unspoken prayer requests. Always a number of those and, and as I always tell you, those matter to God because they matter to you. So let's take a few moments of silent prayer 
and do bring your concerns to God, but also bring your joys. You know, we, we tend a lot of times to complain because that's what we do. But God has really blessed us in a lot of ways, sometimes ways that we're not even aware of. So let's go to the Lord and, and be grateful. Let us pray. Lord, as we come to you on this beautiful day that you have created, let us indeed rejoice and be glad in all that we do and all that you do for us. Lord, so many times in our lives we feel like things are working against us or we feel like things just don't seem to work out the way we want them to. Well, Lord, help us to realize that you have promised us that life is not always going to be easy, but that our journey, however long, will bring us home safely when we trust and believe in you. So on this day, on this third Sunday in the season of Lent, on this day when we join together and remember the sacrifice that Jesus made and the giving of his body and the giving of his blood, let us take all of those burdens this morning all of those concerns and cares and worries and frustrations and fears and lay them here at the altar at the foot of the cross this morning as we share with one another and we share with you. So this morning, Lord, I want to lift up each one who is here today. Whatever it is that is lying on their heart, a joy or a concern or both, I want to lift them up into your care and your love. But Lord, we also lift up all those who are not here with us. Those who are ill, those who are in hospitals or nursing centers, those who are traveling, those who are experiencing loss, those, Lord, who are serving our country around the world. Some are still in dangerous and hostile places. And for those, Lord, who will be going to those places, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for their safety. We pray for their families that you will touch them with your love. Lord, the names that we raised up to you and the hands that went up, they represent special needs as well. Needs that you know about, but needs that we want to bring to your attention because they matter. So, Lord, as we lift those names, we lift them from our heart to you. We pray that whatever, whatever that person needs, whatever it be a joy or a concern, whatever worry or frustration or fear, Lord, that that be erased and that you bring the calmness and the peace and the joy of your kingdom into our lives. But Lord, we have to be humble in your presence because we know we've not always acted in the ways that we should. We are human and we do make mistakes and we do act sometimes out of anger or fear or frustration or hurt. And Lord, there are times when we think that the busyness of life has got us so involved that we don't spend as much time with you in prayer or in your word. So Lord, as we seek forgiveness this morning, we seek more than that. We seek to be strengthened, to be nurtured, that through Holy Communion this morning, through the body and the blood of Christ, Lord, our sins will be washed away. Our sins will be nailed to the cross and left here in this place that we can leave here with a new start, with a new beginning, with a new light in our heart. For all these things we lift up to you, the Lord of our life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who taught each of his children to pray together the prayer that we now share as a family as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
Our hymn of praise this morning is number 381, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Let's stand and sing together, number 381.
Our scripture readings this morning from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 9. If you'd like to follow along in your few Bibles, you'll find it on page 531. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See? I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Continuing our reading in the New Testament. From the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 37 through 52. Again, you'll find that on page 56. While he was speaking, a Pharisee invited him to dine with him. And so he went in and took his place at the table. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not first wash before dinner. Then the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness, you fools. <clears throat> Did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? So give for alms those things that are within, and see, everything will be clean for you. But woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue, and herbs of all kinds, and neglect justice and the love of God. It is these you ought to have for practiced without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love to have the seat of honor in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. Woe to you, <clears throat> for you are like unmarked graves, and people walk over them without realizing it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us too. And he said, Woe well, also to you lawyers, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not lift a finger to ease them. Woe well, to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your ancestors killed. So you are witnesses and approve of the deeds of your ancestors. For they killed them, and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, so that this generation may be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be charged against this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter, your, enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. The word of God for the children of God. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Amen. Amen.
I knew a young lady whose name was Karen, and Karen was probably weighed 110 pounds, dripping wet. And a few years ago, she had a doctor's appointment, was on her way to the doctor's appointment, and when she turned her car down the street where the doctor's office was, four-year-old Tracy ran out in front of Karen's car. Now, Karen immediately saw her and immediately hit the brakes and tried to swerve to miss her, but it was too late. Tracy was struck by the front of Karen's car and rolled up underneath the front. Now, the time of the impact, Tracy was hugging her new teddy bear, which was about the size of her, and the teddy bear took the bulk of the blow, but horrified by what had happened, Karen jumped out of her car and ran to the front of the car where Tracy was pinned underneath the car, but the majority of the weight of the car was being cushioned by the teddy bear, and Tracy was more frightened than she was injured. Well, as people ran forward to help from around in the neighborhood, Karen did an unbelievable thing. She ran around to the front of the car and grabbed the bumper and lifted the car some six inches off the ground so people could pull Tracy out from under the car. Now, Tracy was fine. She was more frightened than she was injured, and miraculously, uh, neither was Karen. Karen was not a bodybuilder. She was not a weightlifter. But in a moment of crisis, she lifted the front end of the car, a 3,000-pound car some six inches off the ground to help save this little girl's life. And when Karen finally got to the doctor's office, she found that she had strained some muscles in her shoulders and her legs, but otherwise she was fine. And three months later, gave birth to a healthy baby girl. Now, I am sure that adrenaline had something to do with it, but I think that there was something more than that. We humans have mysterious capabilities of doing tremendous good. But we are also capable of horrifically evil things, like 9-11 and Columbine and the Colorado theater shooting, the Murrah bombing, Sandy Hook School. The list could go on and on and on. Folks, we have incredible powers and amazing capabilities within us which when properly harnessed and properly used can enable us to do anything and astonishing things. But when those powers within us become corrupted or they become contaminated or compromised, they can cause us to do dreadful and horrible and evil things. And that's what our gospel story in Luke 11 is about this morning. Jesus is reminding us here that the inner life is more important than the outer life because that's where the major battles in life are won or lost. Not on the outside, but spiritually on the inside. In our story, Jesus had just finished speaking and one of the Pharisees who was in the crowd had been there, invited Jesus to his home for dinner. And Jesus accepted and went and sat down at the table and began to eat without washing his hands before eating. Well, the Pharisee was astonished by this. And Jesus, obviously sensing his displeasure, said, Now you Pharisees clean the outside, the cup and the platter, but inside you are full of robbery and wickedness. You foolish ones... Didn't he who made the outside make the inside as well? But give that which is within to charity, then all things will be made clean. Now, the key to this phrase is in this last sentence. It simply means that if all things within us are done in love, then automatically everything else will take care of itself on the outside. Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, 
This is pretty much a one-sided conversation, as Richard shared it with you. The Pharisee may not have even uttered a word, but I'm guessing that his body language and his facial gestures made it abundantly clear that he was disgusted because Jesus had not washed his hands before eating a meal. You know, we were talking about that in our Bible study this morning, that growing up I can remember saying or doing certain things, and my mother or my father didn't have to say a word. It was the look that they had. And I knew, and I knew they were not, unha- they were not happy with, with what went on. But so Jesus here responded by talking about the outside and the inside of the cup and the plate and said that it is not consistent to be worried about external cleaning when the inward, the inward part of us is filled with wickedness and filled with greed. Folks, there were and still are, these are very strong words. They were then and they still are now. And Jesus was and still is concerned, very concerned, about what's going on on the inside. He's concerned about the inner life because Jesus knows that it's not enough just to talk a good game, not enough just to talk about doing things or or being things or, or doing things. Just to go through the motions because it's what's on the inside. It's what's in the heart that comes out from the heart that really matters. So let's bring this a little bit closer to home as we have been talking during this season of Lent about giving up bad things for Lent. Let's look this morning at some of the enemies that come from within. Today let's look at three of what I think are three of the most deceptive and subtle enemies from within our hearts. Let's first of all look at the enemy of envy. You know, envy is so sneaky and so subtle that sometimes we don't even realize we're doing it. It's dangerous. Good example. Um, If you know an attorney, you have an attorney, I have an attorney, they're not likely to be too upset if you talk to them about Dr. X being the best doctor in town, but if the same person tells them that Mr. Y is the best lawyer in town, then envy may begin to perk up unless we're careful. You see, it's in our own field against our own competitors that envy can poison our souls. We've all experienced it. I've talked to you about things that went on at the police department, about promotions and people who who were promoted that you didn't feel were qualified to be promoted. We're all envious of things like that. It's happened to all of us. And this probably explains, on that day, Jesus' unpopularity with the local leaders because they saw Jesus as a competitor. They saw him attracting people. They saw him winning in their field of expertise. And they took offense to it. And they became envious over it. And they couldn't stand it. And it caused them to become dangerous and destructive and sinful. And it caused Jesus to be nailed to a cross. And today, folks, we're still doing it. We crucify people with our words and with our attitudes. We destroy people with pointing fingers and accusations and gossip. And try to justify our actions by saying, It was the right thing to do. We had to do it for our own protection. We had to do it for the common good. Folks, envy is dangerous. Envy is an enemy from within. Envy can get people crucified and can destroy people's souls. And then there is the second thing, the enemy of blame shifting. And we all know about blame shifting. It's temptation to rationalize, to explain away, to point the finger at someone else to get the attention off of each of us. It's an enemy from within that the Bible has exposed repeatedly over and over again. In Genesis 3, the man and the woman ate of the forbidden fruit and the man uh, blamed God and blamed the woman. Woman you gave me to be with, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate of it. Well, the woman blamed the serpent. She said, the serpent tricked me and I ate and God would have no part of any of it. 
And then later in Exodus, when things got tough in the desert, you know, the, the Israelites wanted nothing more than to be led away from their captivity. Yet when they got into the desert, the people turned on Moses when things got tough and blamed him for their hunger. They said, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out here into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And even in the New Testament, we see the story of Pontius Pilate trying to pass the buck and shift the blame for the crucifixion of Jesus. Folks, we all do it. A boss blames his or her secretary. She blames the co-workers, and then the co-workers go home and blame the family. Someone put it like this, the trouble with some people is they just don't admit their faults. And I'd be the first to admit mine if I had any. That's what they say. <laughs> well, you know, it starts early. Think about it, it really does. When we're children, when we're children, all of these beautiful, lovely children that are down here, you parents, have you ever heard it? She made me do it. He told me to do it. Everybody else does it. Well, if I had a dollar for every time I use that at home. Everybody else does it. Folks, blaming things on others or on Satan is a cop-out. Because demonic powers, witchcraft, black magic, they don't control us. The devil doesn't even control us. The devil can give us suggestions, but he can't make you do anything. The devil made me do it. Sounds like a good thing on a television program years ago, but it's not true. It's not true because God gave each of us the freedom to choose between right and wrong. And we don't need a scapegoat because we have a Savior. And then the third thing that I want to talk about this morning is the enemy of self-pity. Have you ever been down, I mean emotionally drained and mentally exhausted, and you couldn't figure out why? I've been there. Well, most of the time it's because we're feeling sorry for ourselves or feeling sorry for the situation that we're in. We might be nursing a hurt over something that someone said or did, whether it was real or imaginative, but folks, self-pity can ruin our lives. It depletes us physically and mentally and emotionally and spiritually. It's an enemy from within that cuts us off from God and cuts us off from salvation. But this morning, there's good news because there's always good news. The good news is that God loves us and accepts us just the way we are. No matter how others treat us, God is always there for us. When we remember God's love and pass that love on to others, then we can, with God's help and God's grace, rise above envy and blame shifting and self-pity. Because with God's strength and power, we can be victorious over the enemies that we have within our hearts. And this morning, as we talk about being envious of others and, and blame shifting, and self-pity. A lot of that went on during the last week of Jesus' life. There was a lot of, of blame shifting that went on. There was a lot of envy that went on. Envy is what started it all. The scribes and the Pharisees were envious of Jesus. They were envious of his popularity and how quickly they turned on him. How quickly shifting the blame, blaming him, blaming others, instead of looking into their own hearts. And what did Jesus do? He remained silent. He remained silent. He gave up his own body and gave up of his own blood so that each and every one of us wouldn't have to live a life of fear or a life of pain or a life of grief. That's what it was all about. And that's what this is all about. The giving freely of Jesus' own body and Jesus' own blood for our freedom 
You know, we talk about freedom all the time, living in a country of freedom. But if you are shackled by the chains of sin, self-righteousness, envy, blame shifting, if you're shackled by those chains, you're not free. There's only one way to, to get that freedom. And you can't earn it, you can't buy it, but you can take it because it's given to you freely. Because we know that Jesus gave it to us through His body and through His blood. On that night that He dined with His disciples for the last time before His crucifixion, all gathered around together like we're going to be doing here in just a few weeks in our Seder meal. And during the meal, He, he broke the bread, giving thanks to God, and then gave it to His disciples. And He told them, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And then when supper had finished, Jesus took the cup and again gave thanks to God and then, and then gave the disciples the cup and said, drink of this, all of you. This is my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it. And so, my friends, we lift up these elements today, these elements of drink and of bread. We ask that the Lord bless them. Lord, bless these elements and bless those of us here who are to partake of this. May this be for us the body and the blood of Christ. And Lord, as we partake of this, Lord, may we honor and glorify your name, for it is through him, with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, this day and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come and dine at his table and leave here in a new light. In a new light. that I am the way and the truth and the life. Those who believe in me shall never die. May rise and go in peace. May the love of God be with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never die. And then rise and go in peace. May the love of God be with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> that I am the door, but anyone enters by me, he will be saved and find pasture and find peace. May I rise and go in peace, and may the love of God be with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. of the world. He who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. May rise and go in peace. May the love of God be with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. vine and you were the branches, but by this my Father is glorified that you may bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. You may rise and go in peace, may the love of God be with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <coughs>
Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. But I have other sheep that are not of this fold, and I must bring them also, so they shall be one flock and one shepherd. You may rise and go in peace. May the love of God be with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. your light so shine so before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And you arise and go in peace with the love of God be with you. The Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. said, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. May rise and go in peace, and may the love of God be with you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Closing hymn this morning is a hymn of commitment. Number 396. For Jesus, I have promised. If you haven't made those promises to Jesus, you can right now. You can stand right where you are and sing and share and promise your life to Christ. Let's stand and sing number 396. Shifting 
and self-pity. None of those things have done anything to anybody except ourselves, and they've hurt us. So this morning, you can leave those things here. You can trust in God, that God will get it right, because God always does get it right. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.